Welcome to A-Level and EP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May-June 2023 paper 2. In today's lesson, we will start from question number 11. We have already discussed question 1 to question 10 in part 1. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. Question 11 says, in 2022, CERN announced the discovery of a new particle known as pentaquark, which is made of five quarks. Table shows the charges on some quarks. The five quarks in the pentaquark are charm quark, anti-charm quark, down quark, strange quark, and up quark. Some scientists said that the pentaquark is made of a meson and baryon, held together by the attraction of the equal and opposite charges. So this is very important, equal and opposite charges. Determine the quark composition and charge of a meson and of a baryon that could make up the penta quark. So first of all, what is the possible charge on meson? For meson, we need to understand meson consists of quark and antiquark. So this is the main concept. It consists of two particles. One has to be quark and the other particle has to be antiparticle mean it has to be anti quark so what can be the possible composition so we have to take actually anti charm quark so this has to be must and the second one we can take is charm quark the charge on this one is plus 2 by theory so we can take from here we can take strain quark or we can take down quark so the total charge on this one will be equal to minus 1. So simply we can take here D. So this is our down quark. So the charge on down quark is minus 1 over theory E. And charge on anti charm quark, this will be minus 2 by theory. So the total charge will be equal to minus E. Or simply we can say is equal to minus 1. So the total charge has to be minus E. So or you can say minus 1. Quark composition we have said this is down quark and anti charm quark. You can also write down this can be strange quark and it can be anti charm quark. This is also another possible composition. For the second part, we need to write down quark combination for baryon and also we need to write down the charge on baryon. We have already said that meson is made of these two quarks. So it means baryon is made of CSU. Now if you look at the charge on CSU, charge on C, we have this is plus 2 by 3 and charge on the strange quark, we have this is minus 1 over theory so this is the charge on the strange quark and the charge on the up quark is this so simply we can say CSU so we have charge plus 2 by theory E we have minus 1 over theory E and we have plus 2 by theory E now if you look at the total charge we will have this is theory and we will have here 2 E we will have minus E and we will have plus 2 E so in this case we will get theory E by theory so it means the charge is plus E so this is the charge so meson has negative one charge and this has positive one charge means positive E the charge on this one is equal to the charge on positron and the charge on meson is equal to the charge on electron so these two they will attract each other they have equal and opposite charges so simply quark composition quark combination we can say this is CSU for baryon and the charge on this one is plus E. So this is how you need to answer this question. Question 12 says a particle with charge capital Q and momentum P follows a circular path of radius R. The path is at right angles to a magnetic field of magnetic flux density P. Derive the following equation for the particle. 
for this particle it is given to us the particle is moving in a circle and we can imagine this is the center of the circle and radius of the circle is given to us that is equal to r at this point we can also say the momentum of the particle is in this direction so momentum is equal to mv as this particle is doing circular motion it means that there is a resultant force on this particle resultant force and in this case this resultant force is provided by magnetic force because particle is moving in a magnetic field so simply we can say magnetic force provides centripetal force in this case provides centripetal force and you need to understand centripetal force is not a force by itself means it's not a force like gravity it's not a force like electrical force but it's just resultant force so centripetal force is just a fancy name for resultant force when the body is moving in a circle so we can simply say in this case magnetic force is providing the centripetal force so we can say magnetic force bqv v is the speed of the particle this has to be equal to mv square divided by r for this question we have speed on both sides we can cancel this speed with this so we left with b q r then this is equal to m v from here we can say r will be equal to m v divided by b q and m v is equal to momentum so we can say b divided by b q so this is what we need to derive very straightforward question and this is a typical question you will see in many past papers part b says the particle is an alpha particle of energy 5.4 mega electron volts calculate b means calculate magnetic flux density mass of alpha particle is given and r is given to us in the last part we have already found that r is equal to p divided by b q now we need to find out value of b so simply we can write down p divided by r times q we already have value of r it is given in the question so we can say this is 0.096 meters be careful with units then the charge on alpha particle is 2 times e so 2 times 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs and value of momentum if we have we can calculate value of b energy is given to us so this is kinetic energy of alpha particle now somehow we need to link kinetic energy with momentum i hope you understand kinetic energy is equal to p square means momentum squared divided by 2m if you are not very clear about this one simply you can derive this one kinetic energy is equal to one half m v square and momentum momentum is equal to mv so we can simply write on here this is one half m so we have here v square now if we multiply with m and divide by m we can rearrange we can say this is one half we can say mv square divided by m so simply we can say this is equal to p squared divided by m so this is how you can derive it's very important if you remember this one kinetic energy is equal to p squared divided by 2m means the momentum of the particle divided by two times mass of the particle so from here we can say momentum will be equal to two times mass of the particle times the kinetic energy of the particle and this kinetic energy is given in mega electron volts we need to convert this energy into joules so for this one we need to understand one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 joules and one mega electron volt this will be equal to 1.6 times 10 to minus 13 joules so simply we have to multiply this given value with 1.6 times 10 to minus 13 so we can write on here now we have two times mass we have 6.64 times 10 to minus 27 multiplied by kinetic energy that is 5.4 times 1.6 times 10 to minus 13 so this is momentum and if we solve this one we will get momentum is equal to 1.07 
times 10 to minus 19 newton second or you can say kgs meters per second so this is kgs meter per second so this is value of momentum now simply we can plug in this value here 1.7 1.07 times 10 to minus 19 now if we solve this one we will get b is equal to 3.48 teslas so this is our final answer so we can write down this is 3.48 teslas up to 3 sf the given data is up to 2 sf and 3 sf so you can use 3 sf in your final answer or you can use 2SF so you can also say this is equal to 3.5 Teslas this is also acceptable so this is how you need to answer quite straightforward one the main concept is this one most of the time student they struggle to link kinetic energy with momentum question 13 says linux and cyclotrons both accelerate charged particles to very high speeds the diagram shows a linux explain the use of electric fields in a linux you should refer to the frequency of the ac supply so we need to explain the use of electric field in linear accelerator and linear accelerator simply use electric field to accelerate particles so this is the main principle electric field is used to accelerate the particles so this one is the main principle accelerate charged particle so we can say charged particle so linear accelerator is used to accelerate charged particles how it accelerate let's try to understand this one in detail imagine that we are accelerating positively charged particles so this side has to be negative I mean this tube has to be negative so this side will be negative this side will be positive and this tube will be positive because this is connected with positive terminal this tube will be negative this tube will be positive and so on now if this charge particle reaches at this point and this plate is positive so this charge particle will decelerate because there will be repulsive force on this now we need to understand how much time we want this charged particle to spend in this tube so when it reaches at this point this tube become negative this tube become negative and for ac power supply we understand polarity of ac changes after half cycle so this is the polarity so time taken until this point this time is t by 2 so it become negative after half cycle polarity changes so if it spend time t by 2 in this tube so when it will reach this tube this will be negative then this will be positive then this will be negative and so on so if after half cycle this become negative it means again it will be attracted so again it will accelerate so the time it has to spend in each drift tube that time has to be equal to t by 2 so this is the first thing you need to understand as frequency of ac supply this frequency is constant is fixed frequency fixed frequency so it means that time spent in each tube should be the same time spent in each tube should be the same each tube has to be constant has to be constant and this has to be equal to t by 2 time period of ac so if time is fixed we understand d this is equal to v times t so if time is fixed this time is equal to t by 2 so when the speed increases this distance has to increase it means that length of tube has to increase so the length of tubes has to increase length of tubes has to increase so you can see this tube is shorter this is longer longer and longer so these are some important points you need to understand about linear accelerator if these points make sense to you it means you have understanding of linear accelerator and now let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer in your answer you can talk about these points you can say particles are accelerated by an electric field in the gap so we have discussed this point already here the ac frequency is constant we have discussed ac frequency is constant so particles spend the same time in the tube so they spend the same time in tube 
each tube and time is equal to half of period of a C power supply. This is achieved by increasing the length of the drift tube. So we have to increase L because D is equal to V times T. This quantity is fixed. So when this increase, this has to increase. The AC polarity changes. So the electric field is in the same direction when the particle is in the gaps. So every time when the particle is here, this has to be negative. When particle is here, this has to be, this tube has to be negative and so on. I hope this makes sense to you. What is the main principle of linear accelerator? Particle B says the diagram shows a cyclotron. Explain why magnetic field is applied at right angles to the Ds in the cyclotron. For cyclotron, we need to understand we have AC power supply and also we apply magnetic field. We apply magnetic field. Purpose of AC is to accelerate means speed up particles. So to speed up particles and this is done by electric force. Electric force. So when particles pass through this gap, the speed will increase, means they will gain kinetic energy. And purpose of magnetic field is to keep particle in circle, keep particles in circle. So we need magnetic field, so magnetic field we need and magnetic force is due to magnetic field, magnetic force. And this magnetic force has to be perpendicular to direction of motion of the particles or direction of velocity of the particles. So they will experience force, that force will keep them in circle. And magnetic force cannot increase the speed of particles because magnetic force always act perpendicular to direction of motion of particles. So that's the reason magnetic field has to be perpendicular to the Ds. So if you look at left hand, so if this is direction of motion of particle, then this has to be magnetic field. So angle between them is 90 degrees and angle between force and direction of motion or velocity also 90 degrees. So magnetic force always act perpendicular to velocity. So that's the reason particle go in a circle and only direction of particle changes but speed of particle does not change. So these are the points you need to understand. This question has only two marks so you can write down these two points in your answer. You can simply say particles experience a force at right angles to their motion which causes centripetal acceleration and particles move in a circle. Particles move in a circle and particle experience magnetic force. Magnetic force keep particles in a circle. So the magnetic force is perpendicular to velocity and magnetic field has to be perpendicular to the Ds in the cyclotron.